Arlington, Georgia is down 27 miles southwest of Albany, Georgia, <clears throat> and it's behind the Cotton Curtain by all means. Uh, the major industry down there was farming and sharecropping. Um, it was not an enlightened place. It is still not an enlightened place today. If you lived in the South and you were a Negro, every day there was a social injustice that occurred to you, specifically. If you ventured out of your neighborhood, you would definitely see it. You had no rights that the, the, even the lowliest white kid had, was bound to respect. You were, you were required at some point to give way in, in any way possible, whether on the highway or whether on the streets. You don't have an eye, you don't, it's hard for me to describe to you how vicious the system of racism really is in this country. I was a product of a school system where we used hand-me-down books. Now what does that mean? That, that's a foreign thing to young people today. But the South had textbooks for the black school children, the Negro school children, that, they, that the Negro school children only got them as a hand-me-down when the whites bought the more current books, okay? So therefore, when we got our books, we were already behind. Let's assume a book had been published five years earlier, 10 years earlier. If we get it, the information is 10 years behind. And so the white schools are getting the more current information. Well, the Great Migration flowed from the fact that um, a lot of our people were making uh, really less than a dollar a day. Uh, they were sharecropping and they'd work the entire season and would um, sit down in the harvest season in October, November to quote, split the profits. It didn't really spurt though until around 1909, 1910, because the lynching was just so prevalent along with economic de deprivation. So our people began to go, the men began to go out and go to Chicago, go to Pittsburgh, go to New York, you name it, D Detroit, places where there was employment. In the past, I was a student here at Morehouse College on this ca campus here, AU campuses. And um, when the young fellow sat down in Greensboro on the 1st of February, 1960, I read it in the newspapers at the corner drugstore and I decided to do something about it here in Atlanta because segregation was ubiquitous. It existed everywhere throughout the South. So Greensboro was not an isolated situation where if you solve the problems there, that solves the problems in Atlanta. So we formed a coalition of students and we put together about 5,000 students who were all the students here at that time and we got them behind this effort. And we, was, we were successful in bringing about a change uh, in Atlanta and in, and in some ways in the South. Um, and, I, and we need to thank those nameless, faceless thousands who confronted the power structure, who confronted the uh, economic masters in this town to bring about a change. Atlanta is a great city today, not because the white folks were so good to black people, but because black people demanded a change.